Hi, I'm Bill Belcourt from Blue Ice and I'm going to introduce the new very disruptive Harfang tramp online. And this is a patented technology that results in a crampon platform that is ultra light and ultra compact. Crampon is in three sections in some of the models, allowing you to fold it up into a very small package. The crampons fit in this pouch, and the pouch has a belt loop. You can uh, carry it on the waist belt of your pack or your harness for super easy access to your crampons when you're on the move. Starting with the original Harfang, and this is intended for ski alpinism most of all. So it has a steel front, an aluminum middle section, and an aluminum back. The heel lever is micro-adjust and an injection molded glass-filled nylon. Also, all crampons come with a toe basket, so you can switch between a boot with a toe welt and a boot with no toe welt. Next after the Harfang is the Harfang Tour. All aluminum, three pieces as well, ultra lightweight. Again, comes with a toe basket and a toe bale. Next up, Harfang Enduro. This is all steel, more of a glacier travel, crampon, very durable. Also three sections for the compactness, the lightweight, and to position some points under the middle of your foot, especially important if you have bigger boots. This three-piece design gives you great sole coverage. Moving up into the more technical category, we have the Harfang Alpine. This is a two-piece design. We've grown the front half of the crampon in order to give you more point coverage in the ball of your foot, and that's gonna be better for more technical terrain, steeper climbing, steeper descents. The Harfang Alpine has a steel heel piece, the same micro adjust out of the glass filled nylon as the rest of the line, and still pretty compact, even though it's only two pieces. For a lighter weight alternative, this is the Harfang Alpine Hybrid. So we've got an aluminum heel on this model, it saves you about 100 grams, still comes with a toe bale and a toe basket like all the other models. There are more models to come, but right now we're just up to five. But it's the lightest weight, most compact crampon platform out there. Once you buy into this platform, a lot of these parts are swappable. In fact, they're all swappable. If you're really going to carry the least amount of weight for any objective, you have to be able to fine tune your kit in order to have the least amount of weight. If you've got too many, we would say, really all around components in your kit, you're carrying too much weight. So there's a lot of resolution in this line in order for you to carry the least amount of weight. And since it is a platform, you can mix and match parts over the crampons that you have in order to get the most optimized crampon for the mission that you're on. There's the standard bale that comes with the original Harfang, the Harfang Tour, and the Harfang Enduro that can accommodate a wide range of boots, including Alpine Touring boots. The Harfang Alpine and the Harfang Alpine Hybrid come with a more compact toe bale optimized for technical climbing boots with a toe well. If I have a boot with no toe well, since these come with the crampons, all of them, I'm just gonna pop these on for that weltless boot. For the original Harfang, if I was ski mountaineering in the Alps where I knew there was gonna be icy sections, I might wanna down climb and not ski, or there were icy sections I needed to traverse, I would be far more comfortable with a set of steel front points. Anytime I was on my front points, I would want them to be steel. So steel is going to give you that extra level of security. Aluminum, while giving you some traction in firm snow, is not going to really give you great traction on ice. 
if you're on steep icy terrain, you go with the steel. So ski mountaineering, some icy down climbing or traversing, I would take the original Harfang. Ski touring, the Haute route or uh, volcano skiing in the Northwest when you're tromping up frozen neve in the morning. If I'm in the bugaboos rock climbing and I'm doing some approaches and again, it's frozen snow, even if there's steep frozen snow, an all aluminum crampon is gonna um, give you everything that you need. So ski touring, which is different than ski mountaineering, ski touring crampon. Harfang Enduro, all steel. This would be climbing Mount Rainier, where there's going to be some icy sections. There's also going to be some snow. There might be some tromping through some talus between patches of snow. I want some durability, some longevity, maybe a guide service. And you're going to wear out aluminum really fast in the talus. If I want some uh, durability and I'm willing to sacrifice a little weight, I would go Harfang Enduro. I could still front point confidently with these. Again, sort of mountaineering crampon, I would call it. Good solid all-arounder. Now we're getting up into the Harfang Alpine. And with an all-steel crampon like this, I'd go ice climbing with this. I have gone ice climbing with these. I would say hard alpine, you know, grade six ice, uh, alpine mixed climbing, any place where you would want a dual horizontally oriented front point in the Alpine, I would pretty much take these on almost anything except hard mix routes and really hard water ice routes. You know, a good solid choice for an Alpine technical crampon. And then the hybrid, again, it's like, where can I save weight? And aluminum heels, it's 100 grams, it's a good place to save weight. As long as I'm not doing icy descents where I really want that heel piece to bite into ice, I'd be willing to take an aluminum heel. If there's any question about an icy descent where I'm facing out and needing that heel to really bite, I'd take steel. Just because uh, aluminum on ice will be unpredictable and certainly not as confidence inspiring as steel. So you will lose time with your tentativeness descending with an aluminum heel on icy terrain, then any weight savings will benefit you. So when in doubt, take the steel, it'll give you a lot more confidence. This crampon, while called the Harfang, I wanted to call it the MCC, which is Manu's crazy crampon because Manu, who was the inspirational force at Gravel for many years and is now an inspirational force at Blue Ice, this is his creation. How much rigidity a crampon can add to a boot, it depends on the crampon design and it also depends on the boot that it's on. You know, back in the old days when everybody climbed on Galibier Super Guides, they were all leather boots. Um, and once the steel shank broke, which didn't take very long, the boot was quite flexible, kind of a lot like modern mountaineering boots. And so then if a crampon was rigid, it had to be up to the task of supporting all of the weight of the climber because the boot was not going to do it. And um, lightweight crampon designs of that era often broke, and this was from all brands, over time because of metal fatigue, because the boot was not supporting the, um, the weight of the climber on its front points, the crampon was. And the crampons back then were pretty lightweight, they were like two pounds. Um, but because of the breakage of the crampon rails, the foot fang was invented, if you remember that. It was a three and a half pound beast from low alpine systems. All the rails were vertically oriented and it was indestructible. You could put it on any boot, soft or rigid, um, and it would last forever, and you can still buy them in consignment to this day because of their longevity. Um, but when the plastic climbing boot came along, a, a crampon like the foot fang was no longer necessary because the climbing plastic boot was fully rigid. And so crampon designs got light again. Um, but you know, after the 90s were over, the plastic climbing boot went away. And we went back to 
uh, leather boots, but now using hybrid materials like Kevlar's and carbons um, versus leather and steel of the old days. Um, but the boots, again, were more flexible. And so now the crampons started to um, take more of the weight of the climber, um, and they did no longer last as long because of that. And so crampon breakage started to reoccur. And so as a designer, the question is, um, do you want to support the weight of the climber in the crampon, or do you want the boot to do it? Um, because there is such a wide variety of boots, it would be really hard to know how much the boot could support versus how much the crampon could support. And if you tried to support too much via the crampon, you would have crampons you know, not lasting as long again. And so this platform relies on the boot to support the weight of the climber. The only reason you make the front section longer um, is to have the climbing part of the boot be a little bit stiffer, but also have more point coverage. You know, because just as you would with rock climbing, you know, you could be on the very tips of your shoes, on the inside edge of the shoes, or if you're slab climbing, you could be on the balls of your feet. And so when you design a crampon, you're sort of thinking about ice and mixed climbing with that in mind. And so the front sections are longer on the more technical crampons than the shorter ones, but there is no movable midsection. And so you don't have the full coverage of the sole of your boot like you maybe would prefer in a more mountaineering situation where you're actually getting um, you know, your whole footprint on the surface that you're walking on. And so uh, you're desiring more traction, um, more complete coverage, whereas your technical crampons, you're more on the front points or the balls of your feet. So there is no good answer um, to how much the crampon um, can support or make feel rigid the boot um, um, versus how much the boot um, will bear the load of the climber. And I would say that these days, if you want to do a lot of front pointing, um, get a boot that's up to it. Don't think that the crampon will provide the rigidity. The great thing about climbing is uh, it's constantly reinvent reinventing itself. And so, as an example, once upon a time, you know, there were trail runners and there were climbers. And now we've, uh, we've blurred the lines between the sports and you have climber trail runners setting fastest known times um, on, uh, on all kinds of climbing objectives um, that are amazing times and amazing, you know, feats of not only athleticism, but alpinism. And in order to achieve those feats, you sort of break the rules of convention with the equipment that you use. And so, you know, you'll take, um, you know, trail running spikies and do climbing objectives with them um, if you have the skills. And, and I would never say I don't recommend it. Um, I would only say know yourself and what you can do. Um, and if you know those two things, you'll know what gear you can take to do that thing. And so um, look at all the options out there. Um, and even if it's breaking rules of convention, pick the option that allows you to achieve the objective within what you can do. And so know thyself and choose wisely. Trying to come up with ways to be more efficient in the mountains is about, you know, kind of a holistic look at the system. And we've solved a lot of pieces of it, but Manu's new design here for the Harfang is yet another piece solved. You know, this is also the reason we made the reach packs, which you take running pack features and you put them on a climbing pack, but you also make them secure so the pockets close completely for vertical environments. 
because I wanted a pack where I could drink without taking off the pack because that's why everybody uses like a camelback type system, but also eat without taking off the pack because if you're climbing fast, you're always on the move. So now we've solved the problem where you can drink while on the move, but now you just don't eat because that would mean stopping and taking the pack off. So now um, you can eat while on the move. Um, and then there's all kinds of trick moves to get your ice axe while on the move without having to take your pack off. Um, and I like the idea of this in a waist mounted configuration where I can take my crampons out and put them on or put them back while on the move without having to take my pack off and strap them on the pack. So I, I think it's, you know, that constant refinement of the climbing system is part of the mission, you know, of, of Blue Ice is trying, you know, at times it's just evolution and then at other times it's a little bit of revolution um, in the quest to improve the whole thing. There's other fabric center bars, if you will. I think Camp was amongst the first to make a, uh, a Dyneema sling be the center bar between the front and the back. Uh, and then uh, Petzl's hybrid crampon uses a, a Dyneema cord between the front and the back. Uh, and so, but those are two piece designs. So the real patentable um, unique element here is the floating middle rail on the strap design. And that you know, that not only gives you traction uh, where you typically lose it um, as you stretch between the front and the back, but it also allows you to shorten the front to the point where everything can fold up really tight. And so it's the combination of uh, traction and compactness uh, that you get with this design that is the unique, uh, I would say, claim to Pat.